Hey everybody, uh, this is a 1993 Ford F-250. It's got a 7.3 liter turbo IDI engine. And a big problem with these trucks um, is air leaking in and making them run really rough. Uh, there's really not an easy way to, to look for this. Normally you look at these little caps on top of the injector lines and you look and see if they're wet uh, see if they're leaking out fuel. Uh, there's two O-rings in there where they slide over top of the top of the injector and those O-rings will eventually get brittle and leak. Um, a lot of times with fuel leaks just because it's not leaking out fuel doesn't mean it's su not sucking in air and when air gets in the system it makes it run very rough like it has a very bad miss in it. Um, what I've done here is basically at the end of the return lines uh, there's three points in the return lines and there's uh, the intake line I've replaced temporarily the uh, fuel line that would connect the two points with a clear vinyl hose so I can see if there is any air bubbles coming through uh, if there would be air bubbles coming through while it was running then that would show me that there's an air leak somewhere and the reason that I did not just uh, put them on the return lines only, I also put it on the uh, intake line after the lift pump, is that I could see if air was coming in from the rear tanks or the fuel selector valve or the lines coming up to the lift pump. Uh, if there was air coming through this line and there was also air coming through the return lines, then, then you could estimate that a lot of the air was coming uh, prior to the lift pump or the lift pump itself. Um, if there was no air coming in the intake line but there was air coming in the return lines and that means the caps would be leaking. Uh, with this truck however uh, after starting it up it, it's not sucking in any air from the lift pump up to the fuel filter housing. It's also at no point um, from uh, the return lines on the injectors up to the filter from the injector pump back to the lines or on the rear back here is where this last injector uh, the return line goes and that that's the line that goes back to the tank so let's see if you can see that your last injector on the driver's side the one closest to the firewall that's the that's the return line that will go back to the tank the front injector on the driver's side will go to the injection pump and the injection pump, the, the flow is coming from the pump into the return lines. And then you have your front injector on the passenger side goes back up and it will go uh, back into the fuel filter. This one can be removed. It's not necessary that this line be here in order to make the engine run. You, uh, people do cap these off. Um, this this one will leak and it will suck in air uh, a lot of times uh, when people get the fuel return line kits and they come with the braided hose a lot of times it won't have enough hose in order especially with a turbo truck uh, it won't have enough hose in order to replace all of the fuel return lines in between all the caps so this is uh, one a lot of the times that people won't replace however it will have uh, internal cracking in the rubber that you can't see from the outside the line will feel good it won't feel hard and brittle but the ends of it will leak air um, your injector or your fuel fuel injection pump return line if this uh, flow is restricted if you for example uh, if you pinch this line while the engine runs the engine will stall out uh, the same thing with the return line on the rear. If that line is pinched or the flow is restricted, the engine will stall out. Uh, so basically in order to do this uh, with the engine off, you will uh, just remove those, those lines, those three return lines, and you'll put on your clear vinyl hose. Just push it on. I mean, you don't have to clamp it on anywhere. Um, and then on the intake side where it's coming from the lift pump up to the uh, fuel filter head 
Normally there's a metal line here that will go from the lift pump up to the fuel filter. When I changed my lift pump, the uh, it's stripped out on the bottom. So rather than pay 90 bucks at Ford for another uh, metal line, I just went down to AutoZone and I bought uh, fuel filter fittings. They're like $3 a piece. One that would screw into the back of the filter head, one that would screw into the lift pump. And then I just took a uh, standard low pressure fuel line hose from AutoZone. I think it was about $1.50 a foot and just made a, a like a little patch in between the two. So the whole replacement fuel line cost me, I don't know, less than $10 where a metal one would have been 90. Uh, because I had done that, it made this, this, this test for me very easy. If you have a metal line here instead of a, a replacement rubber line, in the bottom of the lift pump, let's see if you can see, the bottom of the lift pump from your, the line coming from the tank to to the pump, this back one back here, that is a rubber hose. So all trucks will have that. It's not metal all the way. So you can disconnect that line and put a clear hose there in between the line from the, the frame over to the lift pump and get the same effect. It just makes it easier for me because I had done the uh, patch. Anyway, I'll start it up real quick and just show you uh, what I'm experiencing. My truck is still running rough. I need to advance the fuel timing on it in order to uh, hopefully clear it up. So far I've replaced the fuel pump, the, the mechanical lift pump. I've replaced the injectors, I've replaced the injector return lines. Uh, filled both the tanks completely full and I've done this test and it's still running very rough. Uh, the truck has about 150,000 miles on it and I did replace the injectors but not the pump itself or the, the injection pump itself so a lot of times with uh, if you advance the timing <clears throat> slightly it can clear up a lot of the rough idling. See, here's some very rough idling that I have right now. I don't know if you can hear it. If you rev it up at all, it smooths out. But if you let off, it's back to idling very rough again. Puts out a lot of blue smoke, bluish gray smoke. Um, we'll go up here. Right here on the injector, pump itself is a little lever. You press that forward, it's basically just go up the throttle. And this is what I've been experiencing even before I replaced the injectors. I thought the injectors were either hanging up or clogged or leaking, but that hasn't been the case. Um, with the new injectors that I did uh, put in, it ran smooth for about, oh, I don't even know, not very long. Okay, my battery ran out on the camera, so I went and got me a new battery, and here's round two. Okay, what we're going to do, uh, when you do this, you don't want to get a lot of air in your system. You don't want to yank all these lines off, have air drain, have the fuel drain out and air get in, and then you're going to really have a hard time getting this thing started. So, the best thing to do, each little patch that you put in with a clear vinyl hose, um, before you take anything off of this truck, you want to get it uh, warmed up somewhat. That'll clear up any residual air that is in your system if it is leaking air. Uh, turn the truck off, come and 
you'll take one section off at a time. So you'll take the return line from the injection pump back to the uh, forward injector right here. Replace that with a clear vinyl hose. It'll be full of air. Go start your truck up, wait for it to smooth out somewhat again, and then this hose will be full of fuel. Then go over here to this front injector, up to the fuel filter head. Replace that with a clear vinyl hose. And then go in, start your truck up, let the air uh, work itself out. Go back here to the rear, the last one on the driver's side that feeds back to the tank. Um, replace that with your clear vinyl hose. Let it start up, let the air out. These lines will fill up very quickly back with fuel. It's pretty uh, good flow going through there. Uh, the final one you're going to want to do, if you still have your metal line on here and you haven't done a little patch like I did, on the bottom of your lift pump, where it connects to the metal line that is attached to the frame, you can take that off of there. Really, it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt you to just replace that line altogether with a new rubber uh, fuel line. It gets very brittle. It's right next to the exhaust manifold. It gets very brittle. Mine was severely cracked up. Um, just by replacing that line before I did any of this, it uh, smoothed my idle up and it smoothed my uh, fuel pressure out. The fuel pressure um, from the Schrader valve up on top of the fuel filter head before I replaced that line was going between like 3 and 4 PSI and it was bouncing the entire time the engine was running. I replaced that one little line and the uh, lift pump there and now it holds right at like four and a half study, it doesn't move. So that did help with my fuel pressure. Um, you'll take this little line out, the one that goes from the metal line along the frame that comes from the rear tanks over to the lift pump. And you can replace that with a vinyl uh, hose. And you can just, at that point, start your truck up and uh, watch it for air coming from the rear tanks, the rear, uh, the rear lines, and the rear fuel selector valve. Any, any one of those things can leak air. Uh, when you do this test, it's much better to have your rear tanks full. So if there is any air coming from inside the lines inside the tanks, the, the lines will be completely submerged and they won't be leaking anything. Um, at that time, you'll just sit here and, and watch it run and, and see if you see air bubbles coming through. If you do not see any air bubbles coming through this line and you're sitting here with it idling, but over here on the coming out of the top of the injection pump you can see air bubbles, well then somewhere between your filter head and the injection pump you, you're sucking air. If, if you see the uh, bubbles coming from back into the top of the filter head over here, then some of these injectors along this side are most likely leaking air. Uh, the O-rings inside of them really do get brittle and they wear out. And then finally, back here, this is where the return goes back to the tank. That line, if it has any air bubbles coming uh, from the, the fitting on top of the fuel injector over there to the return line, well, that's, that's the exit. That, that's what routes all the fuel back to the tanks that's not being used. Um, so if you do this test, you know, it's very cheap. The, the hoses were less than 10 bucks at Lowe's. And if you do this test, you should see if your um, caps are leaking. Uh, in my case, I'm not getting any air whatsoever. So my rough idling is not coming from an air issue. It's coming from uh, the injection pump. Either that or it's possible that some one or more of the injectors that I have uh, replaced um, could be not popping at the same pressure as the rest. So what, what my next step will, will be is to try to advance the timing slightly on the injection pump. If that does not work, then rather than just order a new injection pump or a rebuilt one, I will pull all the injectors and have them all pop tested uh, again, just to make sure something hasn't clogged one or more of them up. And as long as they all pop tests correctly, then I will go ahead and order a new injection pump. Uh, I'll make a follow-up video if the timing advance works. Uh, if it doesn't, then uh, I'm going to be stuck paying $300 plus for another injection pump. 
So that's my video. I hope that this some will help somebody. Uh, these are very confusing, these little uh, caps, and it's very hard to tell if they are leaking. It's very hard to have any sort of test that'll show you they're leaking, honestly. So the, the clear hose, as far as I can tell and read on and what I've read online, is the only way in order to do that. But instead of just reading a description, I, I thought I'd make a video since I couldn't find anything uh, on any site to, to show me what to do. So I hope this helped and uh, good luck to you.